this is the beauty for me and my position is all of our customers are excited about the product and all of them have offered the ability to pick up a phone and, and, and call as a reference from a peer to peer standpoint. And it's a very great thing. So again, my background, I didn't always have that option available or I'd have one or two. We really have a, a large group of satisfied customers that are willing to speak to, to the benefit and the impact of our technology. Rising above the buzz of ultrasonic cleaners and the clanking of stainless steel are the ideas and voices that are changing an industry. You're listening to the Beyond Clean podcast, the central nexus for the people, processes, and products that are improving our sterile processing world. Each week, we speak with frontline technicians, CEOs, engineers, and entrepreneurs with a common goal to help you fight dirty. Every instrument, every time. Whether you're tuning in for education or inspiration, we're glad you did. Now, turn on those washers and turn up the volume. It's time to go beyond clean. On this Vendor Spotlight, we speak with Sean Bogle, Vice President of Sales at Turbot Surgical. We're going to be talking about multi-tray sterilization today. And Sean has worked as a vendor, has a lot of experience, and knows the value that the Turbot Surgical Pods can bring, not only to sterile processing, but also the operating room and the impact that it has to generate a number of efficiencies and how you can better use that time to increase quality output in the sterile processing department. So we're going to be right back after a short break with Sean Bogle, Vice President of Sales at Turbot Surgical. From 17 Studios, you're listening to Beyond Clean, the global voice of sterile processing. Joining us now is Sean Bogle, Vice President of Sales at Turbot Surgical, and we are very excited to have you on this episode, Sean, to talk about Turbot Surgical and the pod, and so welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. I've been listening to the show, so it's nice to be on this side of it, so I'm looking forward to today. All right. Well, I got to tell you, you've got a radio voice, so I have a feeling you're going to be a natural at this. Why don't we start by just having you tell everyone more about the company and, you know, how it was founded, the vision, and then we can dive into, you know, more of the details. Sure. So the company was founded by Rob Turbot and, and Rick Richmond. And as Rob will tell you, he had a view from the cheap seats as a rep and got to see sort of the process and flow from the SPD and the OR and ultimately some of the inefficiencies. And, and really out of that came the instrument pod. What it is that we do is, is provide a multi-tray sterilization container that effectively allows you to have up to 15, 25-pound trays or 375 pounds. And it allows you to do everything in one versus multiple times. So for us, and sort of the value proposition as we're sure to talk about throughout today is, is based off of a, a very simple statement, which is why do something 15 times when you can do it once? So we were able to come to market. We've been in the market now for going on five years and expanding as, as we've gained more and more customers and, and people have taken this from really proof of concept now to it's actually interesting. We're finding that as our customers start utilizing it more, we're finding more and more benefits and impacts to them that we really weren't looking for when we first brought this to market. So it's been a very cool opportunity for us too to expand our value proposition and, and the way that we can help, much more so than what I'm sure Rob thought in the early intention of, of bringing this to market. Well, you know, that's a great place to start the conversation. You know, there's always, I think, with product development you know, there's the initial concept phase, but until the customers actually are using it, do you not only realize ways that maybe you need to enhance the technology or applications that you hadn't thought of, but the customer really has to drive innovation anytime you're early to market. And as an entrepreneur, everybody knows that is 
we need to get people using this, get feedback from it, and then just continue to enhance that. But I love what you said about sort of this growing value prop that has come from that. But let's start at the beginning. What was sort of the biggest thing that, or the biggest issue in the industry that Rob Turbot had hoped to solve when coming up with this, you know, the pod, the multi-tray sterilization container system. Funny enough, it, it kind of came from an OR standpoint, standing there and watching surgeons sort of twiddling their thumbs as they were waiting because of holes in wrap and, and or wet loads or even to that degree, bio burden. And so how do we eliminate those delays? And that was really the first thing that we were looking at when we, when we initiated this product was how can we reduce those disruptions and delays in surgery? And, and then to your point, as we grew, we started finding all these additional places that we could have significant impacts to. But yeah, the start was that. How do we, how do we stop delays from happening? Yeah, that's a, that's a big thing. And especially nowadays, I feel like surgical volumes have gone up because there's just this backlog of surgeries. And so anything that you can do to work efficiently to fit more surgeries in a day, there are patients out there that are needing that care. And so case delays, boy, that's just killing revenues and killing the ability to, you know, make sure that you can fit in as many cases as possible to catch up on that, that backlog. So as we talk about that and sort of this expanding value proposition, it starts out with case delays and holes and wrap, but what, what is it expanded to? And I know I kind of teed you up there because the whole world has changed during the pandemic. You know, we're going to be talking about workforce and, and these backlogs. I think it ties into this expanding value prop, does it not? It, it absolutely does. The last you know, a couple of years with COVID has obviously had dramatic effects on everybody. And, and one of the things that we have seen that, that the pod is uniquely helping staffs are on fatigue, on staff satisfaction, maintaining and keeping your staff. We've seen shortages. And, and to your point, now there's a backlog of patients and, and, and hospitals are trying to do more and expand their OR capacity, and they're doing it oftentimes with either the same or even less staff to do that. And so the pod is allowing the hospitals to not put the pressure on the staff to perform at even a higher level. And yet, you know, we're saving so much time now in in the OR in turnover time that that we have customers now that are actually adding surgeries to their day. So that's helping take care of the backlog. But in doing so, they're not adding that pressure to their staff in the SPD or in the OR for that matter, because we're able to streamline the processing and the throughput in the SPD. So they're able to do more without having that additional pressure laid on in their staff. So kind of a funny saying in the industry, especially on the vendor side, is I carried the bag. I think you've probably heard that before. And we didn't talk about your background, Sean, but you did carry the bag. And so I wonder if you could talk about sort of how this fit in prior to joining Turbot Surgical. But why did this speak to you? Before you joined you know, the Turbot team, clearly you had an experience from the vendor side. You saw what was going on, you know, from the experience of the frontline technicians and everything else. Like, what was that, what was that experience like for you? So I'd say there's, there's, there's two different answers there. The first was just from the standpoint of selling implants. I would usually make the surgeon happy, but the SPD would look at me funny because I'm adding more inventory and they're having to do more. The OR would look at me funny because I'm, I'm, you know, increasing the learning curve or, or doing things different. And obviously the hospital and the C-suite would look at me cross-eyed because technically whenever you bring something in, it's usually costing more. So for me, just on a personal level, coming in and having an opportunity to provide a great solution for the SPD, a great solution for the OR, and ultimately if we can show additional revenue and certainly cost reductions that we can provide for the hospital at the C-suite level, and then combine that with what we just talked about in staff satisfaction, where they have staff that are happy to be there. They're not getting those additional pressures and what that does for them. We're making all three stakeholders very happy. And that was an unusual place for me to come in to having been in the implant side. The second side to this, though, is, is really 
what it is that we provide in the value proposition. And that's what got me 100% engaged in this product and, and, and won me over. The fact that we're able to eliminate a lot of the inefficiencies, but ultimately what that's doing for the end user, for me, it's a great place to be in, in selling a product that's actually helping and and making a difference. And we're seeing that. We've got a lot of, of feedback from our current customers. Again, just you know, as an example, from a, a very simple standpoint, lifting. And so right now, if they're they're wrapping 15 trays, they're lifting it a couple of times as they wrap it. They put it into onto a rack. They take it off maybe onto a cooling rack, put it on another rack. They'll put it on a case cart. And so with the instrument pod, they're just taking the tray and they're loading it into the pod. They're never lifting it again. So feedback I'm hearing from current customers are, Hey, I'm not exhausted at the end of the day. I'm, you know, eliminating, you know, 1500 pounds of lifting or however much they're doing through, you know, wrapping all of those, those trays during the day. And that's something that's positively affecting, you know, our end user. And, and, and that's nice to sit on that side and, and, you know, be able to provide a, a product that, that really helps people as well as, you know, all the other things that we do. You know, when we're talking about workforce shortages, that worker safety piece is really critical. The last thing many of these departments can suffer now is some sort of workplace injury to be down yet another staff person. And so what you're talking about is reducing the number of potential injuries by reducing the volume of lifting. And and that is uh, not only just the, the fatigue factor, but that's when injuries happen is when people are fatigued and then they maybe take shortcuts in the way that they lift things and then, oh, there's that back injury. And and really, we just, we just can't afford that. We don't have that luxury in terms of the staffing model and sterile processing today. And I want to go back to something that you talked about at the very beginning where the organization was really focused on efficiencies and creating efficiencies. And I know that we lightly touched on that, but I want to take a deeper dive into the efficient processes and reducing, you know, that day-to-day stress, that time crunch. Because again, if there's a workforce shortage, right, everybody's, you know, they're being asked to do more in these departments. And so that increases the stress on, on the staff, it increases stress on supervisors, sometimes the educators, if they're, if a department is lucky enough to have one, they get pulled into the day to day and have less time to focus on educating. Like all of these things are kind of a vicious cycle that end up happening. So finding efficiencies in new ways is really critical to, you know, the survival and the future of sterile processing in these departments and, and the culture. And the work environment. So, can we take a deeper dive into the efficiencies and and maybe talk about those? And feel free to just kind of throw a few out, and we can talk about them together as we go along here. But what are some, you know, what are some efficient processes that really highlight, you know, the difference between you and maybe the standard model for sterilization out in the industry? Sure. I think probably the biggest one that we see now. And that we're able to continuously see or reproduce, it's, it's reproducible within all of our customers has been really going after bio burden for one. We're eliminating time and not just in wrap, but even in containerization, they're still having to do things multiple times. And so we can increase that throughput because we're eliminating different steps altogether. And the idea that you can eliminate those steps that really have nothing to do with your core responsibility, which is cleaning, inspecting, sterilizing, right? You're able to take that additional time and put it into the key or critical aspect of inspection. And so from our viewpoint, our current customers are validating this as well. If, if you're going after best practices and eliminating things like bio burden for one, we're now giving you a tool, the pod, to take that additional time into the inspection so that you can properly do the the you know the inspection and and get your trays to the OR without those problems. So that's first and foremost probably the biggest impact that we're finding on the process and how we can help SPDs do a better job because we're eliminating that additional time. The second thing that I find is that we're able to increase throughput, right? Or decrease the amount of time that it takes to come through. So if you look at the time something comes into decon till the time that it's ready for the OR, oftentimes we're we're able to save anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half or more in that process. And and again, the obvious one is 
the elimination of the wrapping. So that that will take a significant amount of time away. But in addition to that, if you think right now we put the instrumentation into the pod without the lid, there is no blue wrap, there's not tape, there aren't towels, there's no bumpers, all those things that hold in moisture that take longer to dry and ultimately to cool. All of that's eliminated. So we utilize dividers inside the pod so that we separate our trays inside. And that spacing also helps speed up the, the drying process as well as the cooling process. And the fact that we have, from a technical standpoint, a, a large vent, of, you know, our, our vent to volume ratio helps us in drying faster. So there are some areas where we can help consolidate the time that it takes to get from, from the decon to, to the OR. So from a throughput standpoint, we can help assist in many ways. One of the things I'd like to you know, point out recently is one of our customers that had 12 pods was able to do 52 surgeries in two days. And basically, if you imagine pod one going into case one is unloaded in about five minutes or less in the OR, it's back down into the SPD, they wipe it out, and then load it back up by, say, seven o'clock. If it's, a, you know, generically speaking, a 430 cycle, it's ready by effectively a little bit after eight. And even if you gave it an hour to cool, you know, that pod can be back and ready to go by nine o'clock. And what we're finding is that we're able to do more and 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 speed up that process throughout the day so that that the stress or the strain on on the SPD is lightened. And then actually what's very cool is is as you get to the end of the cases for that day, when those pods come down, now they can be filled up with the next day's cases. So oftentimes we're finding our customers are finishing, you know, the, the next day earlier as well. And so the strain on the staff there for f- end of first shift or second shift, or if you have a third shift, we're really moving those around so that you're not putting the, the strain. And the final thing I'll say to this is that I hear oftentimes is, is you know, everybody probably has the, the rep who brings in 30 pans at nine o'clock at night, you know, or 10 o'clock at night. And especially if you have a, a short staff, what is the impact to them on trying to get that done by the next morning? And with the pods, because of that you know, decreased time that it takes to get everything through, that pressure now goes away. They can, they can properly wash, they can properly inspect, they load them up in the pod, they put them in the sterilizer, and, and they're not stressing how to get that ready for the next day. And we can have a significant impact there too. So now I want to shift the conversation to, you know, some other things that I think are important. And I recently did an interview for one of our sister podcasts of the family of podcasts. And uh, that one is Power Supply. It's more focused on, you know, healthcare supply chain. But the interview was talking about sustainability and specifically like green initiatives and how hospitals can move towards you know, that sustainability piece. I'm assuming that after you talk about things like holes in wrap, that there's a cost to some waste there that is kind of part of your value proposition when you talk about the benefits of multi-tray sterilization with your customers. The obvious one is the impact just on, on waste as it relates to trash. So whether it's one, two bags of, of blue wrap trash, per surgery, we're eliminating that up front. So there's a there's a real cost there, a hard cost or a hard savings that we can provide, not just financially, but also from a, a green perspective. And also to recognize a lot of times there's towels and and everything else that go in there. So there's, you know, washing those towels again if they, you know, or or having to buy more if they get thrown out. So there's also a cost perspective and a waste perspective there. What's really been interesting for us is through the last year where we've seen some shortages in blue wrap, how we can have a significant impact there. And it really actually opened us up to a whole nother way of looking at waste and what is the cost of waste. And so one of the things that we see and hear a lot from our customers is, I like to call it the kitchen sink surgeon who, you know, asks for 30 trays and they end up using six. And what happens to those other 24 pans. Oftentimes, if they're not used, they're brought back down and the next day, you know, the the rep will come and they'll unwrap everything and take it away. So 
what is the cost of that and and how can we help limit that cost so right now we have one filter and it's a disposable but really when you load the pod up you use that one filter and you know basically whether they use four trays six trays or 15 trays they're limiting the cost to the to to that one filter and so if you think about this where they have 30 trays and he only uses six you know between two pods you'd have the cost of two filters there versus the cost of all the wrap the cost of time that it took to wrap everything and all of that is considered waste the final thing that i would say is that in that same vein is not only the time that you're utilizing or wasting for your staff and and doing that but also the material that you're using and and right now if blue wrap is in short supply I got to imagine it's difficult to watch 24 trays get torn down in front of you when you're worried about your supply. And so this also limits that waste on that and gives your staff the ability to use the blue wrap where it's needed, but it's not wasting it where it's not needed. Yeah, you know, the other, the big common conversation with supply chain, and, and it's really a conversation now that I feel like everybody out in the general public is having, but supply chain healthcare has been dealing with these raw material shortages for a long time. And there's like a crazy amount of demand, you know, for raw materials. And I, you know, that's, that is such a prevalent issue. I think right now, even in the general public, go to the grocery store <laughs> and, and look at the cost of goods these days. Definitely, costs are going up everywhere, and and certainly too with with shortages in in labor, you know, and and having conversations with our customers again. I had a conversation with a, a, a director of surgical services at a hospital in Colorado, and you know, basically they said, "Listen, it, all the things you said it would do in the OR have happened. All the things you said it was going to do in the SPD, they've happened. That's great, but really the biggest impact for them was you know having conversations with some of their sister facilities." And hearing his peers there talk about the strain that they've had on keeping staff and having to work with staff shortages. And the response I had was, our staff is happy. I don't have turnover. We're working as a well-oiled machine and everybody's happy. And, and so despite all the other things that we talk about from a value proposition standpoint, it really boiled down to that was his biggest benefit and impact was a very happy staff. And they're not having to deal with some of the issues that their sister facilities that don't have the pods. And that was kind of a cool thing to hear from my viewpoint as well. Because again, as we spoke earlier, we're, we're sort of expanding these value propositions as we go. And certainly we're in a unique time with COVID. But as, as difficult as everything has been, I think it has shown for us how we can have an even bigger impact. Yeah, it sounds like it's got a cultural impact because safety and happiness is really key to employee retention. And again, with that shortage, retaining your good employees and keeping them happy too. Just we work more productively in general when we are happy at work instead of having that feeling before we get up or when we're getting up in the morning like, oh, do I have to go do this again today? And I think that's, it's underrated, but it becomes one of the most important factors when you get into a workforce shortage like we're in right now you just can't suffer the losses of especially good employees. And so creating that culture and that environment. You know, if you take the OR perspective into this as well, where we're eliminating, again, holes and wraps, we're eliminating wet loads, we're eliminating bio burden, hopefully, because we're giving people more time to inspect. When you're eliminating those delays in the OR, that obviously has a significant effect as well on the SPD and the environment there making the workplace a happier environment. And that staff satisfaction really is, is that there's a lot of different levels to that. And we're finding that it's not just the throughput, it's not just the process and the less stress that we're putting on and the impact, the elimination of wrapping, but it's also what's happening in the OR and, and the positive effects that are happening there, which are eliminating any of the pushback that the SPD ultimately gets when things don't work well in the OR. And so there's that extra level that we're finding, you know, we can, we can help as well. 
Right. Sterile processing has that internal customer in the operating room. So keeping them happy also has an impact on, you know, just the worker happiness in sterile processing. Less negativity and less complaints equals higher internal satisfaction and worker satisfaction. We find that in, again, our customer group, that our SPD and, and OR staffs really do start to work together better and the communication gets much better. They help each other in making sure that they can get the process down and maximize the benefit. So, you know, from time to time, I'll have a conversation with a, a new prospective customer and we'll talk about that point and I'll get a giggle or a laugh from time to time saying, well, you know, our, our facility is a little bit different. And, you know, sometimes there's a siloing effect, but really it's true. And, and, I've been doing this not enough now and for long enough and have heard the feedback from our customers to know that, again, there's a synergy that can be built and, and you know, we in some small way, form and fashion can, can oftentimes help make that communication better. And again, if anything, at least alleviate the stressors that come out. And so it, it's been an interesting, <laughs> an interesting opportunity for us to see how we can have an effect within that communication standpoint for those two stakeholders. You've really been giving voice to your customer base, but anecdotally, now I want to read some quotes from some customers. So we're obviously not identifying them, but I'm assuming they're all willing to be references. And so anyone who's listening to this, if they wanted to get connected with the source of these quotes, that you could certainly get them connected so that they could talk about the impact and really hear it from somebody who's utilized the turbot surgical pods. But here's here's a couple of quotes. I'm going to start with two, and then I'm going to read a third one, and I'll let you comment in between. But the first one is, wrapping surgical trays is so 2005. Turbot surgical pods is the new standard of care for delivery of surgical instruments to the operating room. And a second quote here, our first impression was that this is too simple and too good to be true. Didn't know that it would actually work the way that it does. I don't know if you want to speak to those two two quotes at all, Sean. Sure, I think it highlights a couple of things for us. First of all, that second quote with it being too simple and too good to be true. I'm a firm believer that you know if you can make something as simple as possible, that's a good thing. But there's a caveat to that. Simple has to work for it to actually be good. And, and this is a great line for us to hear, a great, great quote for us to hear, because it really does validate the fact that we work, we're reproducible. We've got customers now who have done, you know, five, six, seven thousand 7,000 cases or more over the course of a, of a couple of years and, and are really able to sit there and say that, that, you know, again, all these value propositions that we're talking about today are, are really you know, coming about or born from the feedback that we're getting from our, you know, our customers. So it, it is, it's, it's a very simple, I, I, I joke sometimes that, listen, it's a box with a door and a filter and six latches, and it's almost as difficult as I just made it sound. And that's true. The, the, the first quote, though, I think is another, uh, is an interesting quote for us. If you think about this, wrapping has been around for, I don't know, 30, 40 years or longer, maybe. How long have rigid containers been around for? You know, they've, they've been around for decades. And, and when you look at that, you still see that both are being utilized today. So there's still a problem. There's still an inefficiency. They haven't figured it out yet. And so from our end, with the pod and with multi-tray sterilizations capability, we feel that we're really driving a new way to you know, use this in the SPD and in the OR and, and do something entirely different than what's been done before. And that's an exciting part for us to be kind of on the forefront of that. And, and again, you brought up, can we get anybody to reference these quotes or, or who are willing to give referrals? This is the beauty for me and my position is all of our customers are excited about the product. And all of them have offered the ability to pick up a phone and, and, and call as a reference from a peer-to-peer -peer standpoint. And it's a very great thing. So again, my background, I didn't always have that option available or I'd have one or two. We really have a large group of satisfied customers that are willing to speak to, to the benefit and the impact of our technology. And we had just spoken a few moments ago about that staff satisfaction piece. And so here's a final quote that speaks to that. 
Staff satisfaction will probably be the biggest win for implementation of pods. I've been in healthcare 31 years, and in those 31 years, you very seldom find a win, win, win. But we had a win for physician satisfaction. We had a win for our OR satisfaction, the circulators running the room, our certified scrub techs who previously had to hold the tray while we were checking our blue wrap, and a win for our central sterile processing team who's not having to move these trays numerous amounts of time now. Never in 31 years have I seen a win across the board and a win for our leadership team because we're able to bring more revenue, more cases in, and better take care of our community. That's a pretty strong statement. Yeah, it's 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 it again shows to the level that we can help all the stakeholders in in the hospital. I think it's important to recognize that at the end of the day, too, from a patient care standpoint that if we're supplying a product that allows for the elimination of these delays, which ultimately has an impact on patient care, that's a good thing. When you look at kind of what we talked about a little bit ago with, with regard to you know the hospital and revenue, they've had issues over the last couple of years with, with electives being canceled because of COVID. There's this backlog. How do you get through that backlog as fast as possible? We have hospitals now where they have trimmed so much time and turnover time in the OR that they're able to add more surgeries to the end of the day. That has a big impact there. From a cost perspective, as we we spoke earlier, the cost of waste, eliminating all of the, the, the waste from blue wrap, eliminating the waste from pans that are wrapped and not used, that all has an impact on the bottom line for the hospital. From an OR perspective, streamlining that process, taking it down to where the the surgical techs aren't having to hold the pans away from their body for 30 seconds while blue wrap is checked. All of that has an impact on, on the stakeholder there. For the circulating nurse, opening up the room now is opening the door, checking one filter, and now they can go get the patient. So we're eliminating the timeline in there. For the SPD, we're allowing them to focus on the critical aspect of cleaning, inspecting, and sterilizing. And we're helping them with throughput. And we're helping them with eliminating the pressures that come from doing more surgeries now as needed by the hospital and doing it in such a way that it doesn't put that additional pressure and it allows them to, to maximize their efforts without having the additional pressures that land on it. And, and, and for me, this 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 quote really encapsulates all of those key pieces and really shows how profound of an impact we can have with one, you know, one simple pod. So going back to the other one, right, and how simple it is, that to me is a very cool story that we can have something that's so simple, but have such a profound impact across the board. It's, it's a very cool place to be. Yeah, it's interesting because it's really a cultural impact and it's not siloed. You know, it's cross-functional to multiple members of the surgical team. So really great job in this interview. I do want to make sure that we tell everybody how they can reach out to you and the team at Turbot Surgical. So, Sean, how can they learn more about the pods and and Turbot Surgical? So you can go directly to our website at www.turbotsurgical.com. In there, there's also a link where you can email directly to info at turbotsurgical.com. Likewise, we're all over LinkedIn. We have Instagram. There's some YouTube videos even that are out there now. One of them, I will shamelessly plug Beyond Clean that we worked with you on. We have actually a fantastic video that really shows a great overview of how this can be impactful in in all those stakeholders. So all of that is available as well. All right. Well, Beyond Clean put together a couple of things, including our smartphone app. So make sure you're downloading that for iPhone and Android or or Android, I should say. We've got bonus content. So when you click on this episode, you can click the gift box and you'll find a, a lot of documentation and information on the Turbot Surgical Pods. And then in addition, we have a vanity URL. So educate.beyondclean.net slash Turbot 
Instrument Pods. That's T U R B E T T Instrument Pods. So great information today, Sean. I really love how you characterized the cultural impact and how revolutionary this technology and multi trace sterilization can be. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Very nicely done. Well, it was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. That was Sean Bogle, Vice President of Sales at Turbit Surgical, and we're talking about the Turbit Surgical Pods. This is multi-tray sterilization, increasing efficiencies, giving you time back to do the things in your day-to-day work, including inspection, and just spending more time on quality initiatives. And also, I think we cannot understate one of the things that this was just a conversation around cultural change, worker happiness, worker safety, and employee retention as well. And not just something that impacts the sterile processing department, but those internal customers like the operating room and and also having an impact on supply chain. So really broad sweeping value. And I love hearing from the voice of the customer. The quotes are great. I do want to remind everybody that that bonus content is available on the Beyond Clean smartphone app for iPhone and Android. We have that URL, educate.beyondclean.net slash turbot instrument pods. That'll get you over to their website for more information. You can find them on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and then also Doc Social, which is a partner of Beyond Cleans, and you can find all of our content there as well. And finally, the website, www.turbotsurgical.com. That's T-U-R-B-E-T-T surgical.com. You can also email them info at turbotsurgical.com or give them a direct call at 585-755-0133. That's going to do it for this vendor spotlight. As a reminder, you can help support Beyond Clean by subscribing on Apple, Amazon, or Google Podcasts. You'll also find us on Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and we're going to be on your favorite podcast application. All you got to do is simply search for the Beyond Clean podcast. You can also access bonus content like I mentioned for this episode, but download that smartphone app for iPhone and Android. And while you're there, we'd certainly appreciate a rating and a review because your feedback is important to us here at Beyond Clean. If you have any topics that you'd like us to cover on a future episode, send an email. It's info at beyondclean.net. Thank you for listening to this vendor spotlight on Beyond Clean. Beyond Clean.